Amazing. It's absolutely amazing. But under the right circumstances, a producer could make more money with a flop than he could with a hit. Let's assume, just for the moment, that you are a dishonest man. I love you! Assume away. You simply raise more money than you really need. Don't forget the checkie. If he was certain that the show would fail, a man could make a fortune. Hello, boys. So in order for this scheme to work, we'd have to find a surefire flop. What scheme? Somewhere in the back of my head, I knew there was a good story in the adventures of this producer that I was working for when I was 16 years old. He's an unforgettable character, so uh, one day I'm going to write a story about him. I started studying acting when I was 13, and all I wanted to do was be a stage actor. But when I met Mel, he said, I'm writing a screenplay called Springtime for Hitler. Would you like to play that part of Leo Bloom? I said, oh, sure, I would, of course. And that started my whole career. I'm sorry. I don't like people touching my blue blanket. I didn't know who Mel Brooks was. I didn't know who Zero Mostel was. I thought he was a number. I had never heard of him before. You know who I used to be? Max Pialis, the king of Broadway, six shows running at once. He liked to think of himself as difficult. I mean, he really was that character. I mean, you know, it was so larger than life. How dare you condemn me without knowing all the facts? Mr. Bialis, I cannot condemn I'm having a rhetorical conversation. I'm coming, Guy, uh, Monsieur Debris' private secretary. Would you please remove your shoes? When I first saw the film, I thought that I really better make my bag and leave America, because after that, I will never work again. I really, really thought that. Nobody ever said a bad word about Winston Churchill, did they? I didn't know whether the character was crazy or Kenny Mars was crazy. You had broken the stick free loose. You must die! I thought, this will help me if I take this costume home and I sleep in it every night, which I did. Gentlemen, it is magic time. Good luck. He first asked me to do the number, Springtime for Hitler. He said, just make the worst, big, wonderful, flashy, but terrible. Every time we'd hit a level, we'd have to go broader, bigger. And that was the fun of it. I mean, there were no limits to uh, what we could do. There were millions of Hitlers. We had lesbian Hitlers. We had, uh, you name it. They were Hitlers in all shapes and sizes. Jewish organizations at the beginning were outraged. They didn't get the joke. I was surprised that people were offended. And I think that the producers was very in your face. And what you see is what you get. It was right there. And people were shocked. I want that money! Somewhere in the back of my head, I knew there was a good story in the adventures of this producer that I was working for when I was 16 years old. He used to produce plays by having his investors come to his office, and they were all over 80, and he would make love to them, and they would give him money. And they usually make out a check to the current title of his play, which was always cash. And he would make love to these little old ladies, and you'd hear them screaming, I love you, go! It was an embarrassment to the whole building, but meanwhile he got his money and he put on his plays. And I said, he's an unforgettable character, so uh, one day I'm gonna write a story about him. Hundreds of little old ladies stopping off at Max Bialystok's office to grab a last thrill on the way to the cemetery. I started as a book, too much dialogue, not enough narrative. So I said, okay, it's a play. So I began writing as a play, showed it to some friends of mine, too many sets, too many scenes, too many sets. So I said to them, what is it? They said, it's a movie, dialogue, and, and a lot of different places. I said, a movie? I never wrote a movie. They said, well, write it. it. It is a movie. So I wrote it as a movie. I brought it to Sidney Glazer. Sidney Glazer was having a tuna fish sandwich. I read Springtime for Hitler was the name of it then. 
And before I knew it, the tuna fish and the coffee was all over the place, and he was coughing, sputtering, and screaming. He loved it, and he said, I'm gonna get this made. And he did get it made. Phase one is complete. The play is ours. We are now entering phase two, the raising of the money. We went to many producers. We got close at Universal because they said, Hitler is too strong, too menacing. How about springtime for Mussolini? We'll do that. So the only guy that would listen to it and eventually did it was Joseph E. Levine, who was then making movies called Hercules Chained, Hercules Unchained, Hercules Almost Chained, Hercules the Chain is Slipping, Hercules Broke the Chain. He made about six movies with Hercules and a chain. And Joseph E. Levine went on to make the Lion in Winter, The Graduate, and The Producers. And the guy did some incredible films in his uh, brief span as a film company. And we had lunch, and during lunch he said, who's going to direct it? I said, I am. And he said, have you ever directed anything? I said, not really. And he said, what makes you think you could do it? I said, I'm the writer, Joe. I'm the writer. All those little scenes are in my head already. I see them. When I wrote them, I saw them. It'll save us a fortune. If you get a director, he won't know what the scenes are. He'll have to make them up. I know what they are. I'll save you thousands of dollars if you let me direct it. He took a big chance, and I'm forever grateful to Joseph E. Levine for that. And we began shooting a movie called The Producers. It could not be called Springtime for Hitler because many of the exhibitors, they would not put Hitler on the marquee. So I had to come up with a different title. I came up with this ironic title, The Producers, because these guys were anything but producers. And we had numerous adventures casting it, making it, distributing it. It was amazing. It was an amazing adventure. You see this? This once held a pearl as big as your eye. Look at me now. Look at me now! I'm wearing a cardboard belt. When it became, in my mind, a play, even before it was a movie, I envisioned this dynamo, because Zero, his personality was very close to this producer who was screwing all these old ladies. And I needed an ego, and Zero had a big ego. He had everything. Zero had energy, he had brains, he was very smart, smart actor. He had power, he understood who his character was at all times, and he was unashamed, he was very brave. A lot of actors, hide in their characters, but a lot of the real Zero came out through Max Bialystok. So I always had Zero in mind. When I first gave him the script, his wife, Kate, was my secret weapon, because I gave it to Kate first. I said, Kate, you think this would be good? She said, this would be great. Then I gave it to Zero. He turned it down. He said, this is not for me. But it had to be Zero. I wouldn't have done the movie. There was nobody else. Peter Sellers, he was in I'm All Right Jack. He was in a picture called I'm All Right Jack. He was great. And I, I was thought of him for Bloom. So I asked him about it, and he said he would do it. Then I never heard from him again. So I said, he'll never do it. And then I began seeing Gene Wilder in Mother Courage, and I said, that's a guy who would give his eye teeth to play this part. He'd kill for it. And that's the kind of actors you want. I was miscast in Mother Courage, Jerome Robbins directing and Anne Bancroft starring. Her boyfriend at the time was Mel Brooks, Monsieur Mel Brooks. And every night he'd come off stage and he'd say to me, we got to be friends, he'd say to me, why are they laughing at me? I'm not funny. I said, you are funny. He said, I don't mean to be funny. I said, whether you mean to be funny or you don't mean to be funny, God says, you're funny. And one day he says, I'm writing a screenplay called Springtime for Hitler. And I only have 30 pages, he said, but I'll read it to you. I said, you know, you'd be wonderful. You, you would just be made in heaven for Leo Bloom. And he said, oh, what a great character. I'd love to play. Oh, that's me. I am Leo Bloom, I'm afraid. I need Bialystok to give me the courage to live. Oh, I love that character. And he said, you'll never get it on. Nothing good ever gets done. 